Hello, welcome back. Hello, Adara. Hello, anyone that is new. My name is Kenzie, and I am the co-creator of Dead Men Don't Podcast and the teller of spooky stories. I hope you are all doing well, given everything going on. 2020 has been quite a year, hasn't it? Anyway, this week I have a story from Canada's tiniest province, which I have a lot of pictures of because I went there back in 2013. This week, I will be telling the story of the Phantom Bell Ringers of Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island, or PEI, is a maritime province off the eastern coast of Canada. It's pretty small. Uh, the population is only about 157,000 people for the entire province. You can get there by boat and also by car. <laughs> There is a giant cement bridge that connects PEI to New Brunswick. So yes, you can drive 13 kilometers across the Atlantic Ocean. PEI is known for its red sand beaches, its shellfish, and its potato farms. It actually supplies 25% of Canada's potatoes coming from this tiny province. The capital city of PEI is Charlottetown, which is where our story takes place today. You may also know PEI from the world famous book Anne of Green Gables. It has been turned into multiple TV series and movies. The Green Gables house is set up for tourists and I highly recommend going, it's really great. Okay, back to the creepy stuff. On October 7th, 1853, a sea captain woke up to the sound of a bell echoing over the city of Charlottetown. A ship by the name of a shit. <laughs> I really hope that didn't sound like shit. <laughs> a ship by the name of Fairy Queen was anchored at the dock. However, the sound wasn't coming from there. It was coming from somewhere in town. While walking towards town to investigate, he found out that the ringing was coming from the church in town, the Kirk of St. James. He thought this was a little odd because it was way too early in the morning for church service. It was even weirder when he saw three women in white slip into the bell tower. Before he could go and investigate the bell tower, the church's sexton arrived. I had to look up what a church sexton was because I literally had no clue. Apparently it is a person that looks after the maintenance of the church and a graveyard if they have one. The church sexton grabbed his keys and joined the captain to investigate these women trespassing in the bell tower. When they reached the top, the bell was still ringing as if it was struck by something. However, they were alone. Later that day, around noon, the ship at the dock, Fairy Queen, departed for Picto, Nova Scotia. Everyone went about their day as normal, until they received word that the Fairy Queen hit rough seas and sank, killing seven passengers. And the chilling twist to this unfortunate event? Three of those passengers were women, and they were all members of the St. James congregation. The church was replaced in 1878, but the story of the phantom bell ringers still lives on today. This story, like others I have covered on this channel, was featured on the third edition of Haunted Canada Stamps by Canada Post. It depicts three ghostly women among the bell tower while one of them holds a rope. The collection is around five years old and you can't order the individual stamps anymore. However, I found out that you can still order the postcards of both editions. There is the second edition and the third edition. I don't know about a first edition, um, but you can order the entire collection or individual postcards. So mine will be arriving within 10 days. I'll leave the link to the collection in the description if you are a dork like me and want to order postcards just to keep. Anyway, that is my story for this week. Glad to be back into the swing of things. Um, if you like this video, don't forget it to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel for all new content. We upload every Thursday. Uh, can't wait to see what you have in store for me next week, Adara. Um, that's it. Peace out, ghouls. Oh, loud cars, loud cars, loud cars. Now there's a motorcycle race.
Maybe this is why I film at like 11 p.m. at night, even though it's not good for me because I get too tired and I get too creeped out because it's too dark. But <laughs> there's none of this. <laughs>